Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us. Our guest is Dr. Dmitry Kratsov. He's Vice President of Research and Development at Vanessa Research, and he's joining us on the program to talk about a very rare genetic disease that affects infants with very severe diarrhea. It's called MVID. Welcome to the program, Dmitry. Hi, Neil. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for having me this morning on your, um, in your program. We're real glad that you could uh, take the time. Now, um, being vice president, president of research and development at uh, Vanessa Research, give us a very brief uh, background about yourself. Uh, what type of, of a doctor are you? So um, I received my medical education in Russia um, at the Krasnodar State University Hospital. And uh, uh, after practicing for a little while, I decided that I'm very interested in, uh, very interested in doing biomedical research. So um, I applied for a postdoctoral position at Vanderbilt, and I've been studying the molecular genetics of uh, rare diseases at Vanderbilt for quite some time. Uh, then I joined Yale as research faculty, and uh, actually most of my work there was uh, revolving around the microbial inclusion disease. Mm -hmm. And at some point we just uh, basically accumulated enough data to start focusing on just the, this disease itself and just developing the treatment for the disease. Microvillus inclusion disease. What is that? I mentioned that it causes infants to have severe diarrhea. What causes the disease and why does it affect infants and does it only affect infants? So this is a genetic disease. And the only way a person can get it is if, uh, if just both parents are silent carriers of the mutation and the gene and they both transmit it to the, to the kid, to the offspring. So there is no way that somebody can acquire it during the lifetime. It only manifests soon after birth and it only affects the infants. Is this something that um, an infant grows out of? It, it's, a, it's a terrible disease. It's mm -hmm. probably one of the worst diarrheas known to the humankind. Oh, my goodness. And it, 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 it's really terrible. So if you think of a cholera as being a terrible disease. Well, microvillus inclusion disease is way worse than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, without literally uh, urgent medical support, without the measures that, that, that are life-saving for these children, they cannot survive. And this disease is not something that can be easily outgrown. So the, all these kids have to really be treated for the rest of their lives. And with the microbial inclusion disease, unfortunately, it's very short. The average lifespan for these patients is only about four and a half years as of now. Four and a half years. What is the traditional treatment for these kids? What has that, that treatment been? There's no treatment that is specific to this disease. So when newborn is detected as having the microbial inclusion disease, they're immediately placed on the life support. So uh, the feeding must be stopped at once because it aggravates the disease. Mm -hmm. And what the what would doctors do to help the to help to save this this child's life is they would put them on the intravenous hydration and feeding, so-called uh, parenteral nutrition, and they would supply all the fluids, electrolytes, and nutrients that the baby needs intravenously. And this is actually not the treatment treatment per se. It's just the way of saving this child's life. Hmm. So it's excellent in the short term. It's it's amazing. It's it's literally a lifesaver kind of a uh, of a treatment for the disease. However, the symptoms don't stop. So the child continues having the diarrhea, and uh, worse. Over time, the parental nutrition um, eventually leads to severe complications, such as sepsis, such as liver failure, and this is what is really limiting the lifespan of these patients. And some of the things is that, that are still a standard in the care is that uh, the 
children that are affected by the microvillus inclusion disease are, are being currently advocated to have a small bowel transplantation as soon as possible to prevent the eventual liver failure. That's horrendous. And it, uh, as you say, it's a, a way to save the baby's life. It's very short term. And it is just as uncomfortable as almost no treatment at all, it seems. We're here to talk about a, a white paper addressing this um, MVID knowledge gap. It's a comprehensive case analysis. What does this white paper um, offer in the way of hope uh, for the future for some of these kids? So um, just just to touch up on, on, on the treatment options, just to kind of uh, comment on your thought that, yes, it's terrible. It's, it's much like having no treatment at all. And the babies are on the parental nutrition on this IV system for up to 24 hours per day, literally. Some of them are. But um, the, uh, what we're trying to do with the white paper here is um, – Right now, if you think of the field of, of the diarrheal diseases, then there, is, there are some typical diseases like uh, infectious diarrhea, travelers, rotavirus in children. That is really, really common, widespread. Everybody understands it. Everybody thinks of it when they see children, uh, when, when, they, when they see a child with, with the diarrhea. And then there is a group of really, really rare congenital diseases that only a few high-level healthcare professionals know about and can actually detect and treat properly. So, and then again, I'm speaking about healthcare professionals in this case. Both cases are actually doctors. The current knowledge gap is that, yes, the disease is known. However, it's only known to literally a handful of physicians and a handful of pediatricians in the world. Well, most of them are completely unaware of the disease. Wow. And worse, since this is a rare disease, there's only a few hundred of cases that have been reported. The patients and patient families are completely unaware of what is, what is the disease, what is it all about, what, what is happening with it, like what is happening to their child, what's wrong, can it be treated, all these questions. It's a huge, huge, huge gap hmm. in the understanding between the public, let's put it that way, general medical community and very specialized high-level uh, physicians and scientists who know this disease and know it pretty well. Now, there is a, 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 a drug that's been developed um, specifically to, tr to attempt to treat um, microvillus inclusion disease. Uh, we have come up with the idea of uh, uh, sort of uh, like to trick this disease in a sense. So the, the, the background here is quite simple. So it, it is a genetic disease. So it's a mutation in the gene. The gene does not work. It doesn't make a functional protein. So how, do, how can you possibly treat it? Well, these days there's so much information about uh, 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 different kinds of genetic treatments when, when they literally try to replace a defective gene with, with something. Uh, with a working copy, that's still in development. So it, 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 it really has been kind of on and off with the approvals, with the efficiency of this type of a treatment, and it's a really, really complicated thing to do. Um, we took a bypass because the, uh, the concept behind our treatment is that we don't necessarily need to replace the gene because there is no a direct cause-effect relationships between the missing protein, mm -hmm. protein and the symptom of the diarrhea. And this is exactly where we targeted our treatment when we designed it. So instead of replacing the missing protein, we found a way of how to bypass its function in the cell. And it can be easily done by combining several of, of the known substances that, that are really well characterized, really safe, that's been on the market forever, mm -hmm. but they were literally never thought of being applicable in the case of the microvillus inclusion disease. And this is the strategy that, that we are taking. So basically combining what has what already exists into one compound? Yes, okay. correct. Yep. And, and yep. what is the name of this compound that you've developed? We call it Shilasin. Shilasin.
Shilison. Shilison. The, the first ever drug developed to treat microvillous inclusion disease. And uh, where can our listeners go online and get some more information about uh, Shilison and uh, Vanessa Research as well? We have a website, um, vanessaresearch.com, and we also have a, a whole section dedicated to the educational campaign about the microvillous inclusion disease, mvid.vanessaresearch.com. Well, Dimitri, uh, thank you so much. Uh, lots of uh, great information on a topic that I am, have never uh, heard of it and a very rare disease. Thanks for the information. Also for uh, the website where we can go and learn about Shilison as well as Vanessa Research Incorporated and um, any of the other research that you're involved in. Well, thank you so much, Neil. Thank you for having me here. And I really hope that this will actually like that, that we will be heard and uh, all people will, will know and recognize microvillous inclusion disease when they encounter it. And that's that's our kind of that's our main goal to educate, educate and educate about the disease. And we are more than happy to, to help you in that endeavor. Once again, thank you, Dimitri. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure here too. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.